Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today let's continue talking Bordeaux. As I mentioned before, Bordeaux is one of the largest winemaking regions in the world and I simply couldn't squeeze all the information about it into one video, even if it was just by slightly dipping the toe. So make sure to watch my first video where I covered such topics as geography and climate, as well as the most important grape varieties of the region. Now let's continue! Understanding Bordeaux appellations and wine's hierarchy systems can sometimes be a daunting task. Bordeaux is home to over 65 different appellations, the largest of them being Bordeaux AOC and Bordeaux Superiore AOC. There's even an appellation dedicated for sparkling wine production, which is Cremant de Bordeaux. Interestingly, under these regional appellations, one can find both entry-level wines and absolutely beautiful gems from some of the top estates. Then there are smaller regional or rather sub-regional appellations which include Medoc and Entretemer amongst others. And lastly come village appellations if you will, which includes such well-known names as Margot, Pouillac, Saint-Emilion and Sauternes. It's worth to note that these appellations don't have a specific hierarchy system between them, especially not in a way as seen in Burgundy. It's rather the name of the estate that serves as a quality sign, not necessarily appellation itself. For example, Chateau Margaux wine, Pavillon Blanc, is bottled under the Bordeaux appellation, but few doubt the quality of this wine. Not necessarily under the AOC appellation comes the famous 1855 Medoc classification. It is unique and indeed interesting and because of that oftentimes criticized. As this is only an introductory video, I will not delve deeply into it. What makes it unique is the fact that it classifies estates, not the vineyards, as in the case with Burgundy. Established in 1855, it has undergone very few changes since then. Despite many chateaus changing ownership, buying and selling vineyards, and even some chateaus being incorporated into others. Nevertheless, each chateau still retains its status. The original classification divided 57 estates into hierarchy of five levels. Nowadays, only five chateaux remain at the top as Premier Grand Cru Classé. These are Chateau Lafitte, Chateau Latour, Chateau Margaux, Mouton Rothschild and Aubryon. It seems that classification in Saint-Emilion that still rates estates, yet is revised every 10 years, would make more sense. But interestingly, the ranking in Saint-Emilion is not solely dependent on the wine's quality alone, but also influenced on how the estate welcomes visitors, for example. Well, it is a nice touch when I am visiting myself, it is not as important for me when I am choosing wine in a restaurant or wine shop. Aha! But to make things even more interesting or confusing, who knows, we should not forget about another classification system, which is Cru Bourgeois. It is only natural that other estates made high quality wine, but them being excluded from the 1855 classification meant that they oftentimes were overlooked. This was one of the main reasons for birth of Cru Bourgeois classification in 1932. More than any other classification in Bordeaux, I think Cru Bourgeois has experienced its ups and downs, at one point being so low that the term was forbidden to use altogether. However, this is a story with a happy ending and currently Cru Bourgeois is a renowned classification that undergoes revision every five years. Lastly, there are regions that proudly stand alone and don't require any written hierarchy system at all. Take Pomerol, for example. Everyone seems to know who reigns over this appellation with undeniable quality, price and fame, which is none other than Chateau Petrus. Lastly, let's briefly discuss major wine styles of Bordeaux. Bordeaux is a primarily red wine country, and the most famed names that we all probably have heard of, such as Chateau Margaux, Chateau Fijac, Petrus and Cheval Blanc, you name it, produce age-worthy red wines using various proportions of the key red grape varieties Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Cabernet Franc. These wines, especially so with Grand Vaughan, almost certainly will be aged in new French oak barrels 
with the majority spending over a year in them, usually somewhere between 15 to 22 months. Typically, these wines dictate ultra premium prices and in terms of availability, some might be harder to acquire than others. Most estates also produce second and even third labels. There's not necessarily a specific definition for these wines though. It may refer to younger wines, different plots, a different blend of grapes, less aging or even different style. Second and third labels generally offer more approachable price range and are more readily available in wine shops and restaurants. For example, Chateau La Tour is the Grand Vaughan. Their second wine is Le Fort de La Tour and third label is Pouillac de La Tour. And each wine has different composition, grapes harvested from different plots and different oak aging regime. But not all red wines produced in Bordeaux are capable of long cellaring and development. In in fact, the majority will be Merlot-based, juicy and easy drinking red wines that have never seen oak barrels. The best examples of these wines should offer bright fruit, moderate body, polished tannin structure and should not leave you with empty wallet. Bordeaux is also home to some very special white wines. Similarly, as with red wines, these whites also tend to be blend from several grapes, most common from Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. And just like their red counterparts, these wines are typically aged in oak barrels. They are dry, often full-bodied, with refreshing acidity, beautifully perfumed and capable of long cellaring. Interestingly, some white wines have become more famous and sought after than their sister red wines, for example, Aubryon Blanc. However, Bordeaux also offers many easy drinking, juicy, moderately aromatic white wines that should be enjoyed as young and fresh as possible. We cannot forget about the famous sweet wines of Bordeaux, especially those produced from botrytized grapes in Sauternes and Barsac. Here also, Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc are the main grapes. Vineyards will be walked through several times to harvest bunches or even only the grapes that have been fully overtaken by the noble rot. While they might not look very appealing from the outside, it's what's inside that truly matters. These grapes are making lusciously sweet wines with unique aroma profile of beeswax, candied oranges and saffron. Similarly to other Bordeaux wines, these sweet wines can also be aged in oak barrels, only adding to their flavor complexity and can be cellared for decades. Bordeaux also offers range of pink wines, which in some cases can come as a byproduct of red winemaking process. Additionally, you can also find here bottle fermented sparkling wines, both white and pink in color. However, both of these wine styles represent a minority of what actually is produced here. If you didn't find information you were looking for about Bordeaux winemaking region, chances are I talked about it in my previous video, Introduction to Bordeaux Winemaking Region, Part 1.